Hey everybody, George Weber here of G Weber Arts. We're here in the cave, and uh, well, if you live in California, you probably know that PG&E has been turning the power off and turning it on and turning it off and back and forth and back and forth. Month of October alone, I've had more than 10 days without power off and on. The longest one was five consecutive days, but it gets to be annoying. So I decided to get myself a little generator and uh, we're gonna do an unpacking and uh, fire it up. So stay tuned. So my little WEN generator arrived today. That's W-E-N, WEN. And um, this is model 56203I, which has a fuel shutoff. So basically you turn off the fuel and it will run out of gas that's in the carburetor so that your carburetor doesn't get gummed up over time by having gasoline in your carburetor which I think is a pretty good idea. Anyways, we're gonna open this up and take a look at what we've got and then we'll set it up and fire it up and see how it goes. Now, obviously, manual, that sort of thing. Uh, little tool kit, looks like a spark plug wrench, screwdriver, and a little wrench wrench. That's lovely. Little filling funnel, which is probably for the oil, because uh, as I understand it, the oil is down low and kind of tricky to get at. So that's probably what that's for, as opposed to filling the gas can. Some foam, don't need that. Some more foam, don't need that. And some more foam. All right, here we go. Yep. Well, okay, looks like a nice little unit. Not too heavy, probably uh, around 50 pounds, maybe a little lighter than that, hard to tell for sure. You know, I didn't look up the specs, but I'm guessing that it's right around 40, 50 pounds, somewhere in there. Could be a little lighter. You know, when you're moving around like this, it doesn't feel very heavy. When you lift it, however, it feels a little more husky. So this is uh, this unit is 2,000 watts max. Its running wattage is uh, 1,600, and this is a inverter generator. So. It produces power by inversion, where it's producing one voltage and outputting a different voltage. All right, so uh, I'm going to take a look at the manual real quick and see what's what, and then we'll get back to setting this up. All right. All right, so we're back. Um, it's getting a little warm out, so I'm going to take off my jacket. Whew. Okay, so. First thing to remember when you get your generator is it does not come with oil in it. So, first thing you want to do is check your manual, see what they suggest for oil. Uh, different manufacturers will have different recommendations, obviously. In this particular case, they're uh, suggesting for all weather it is a uh, synthetic 530 that's uh, what is it now? Let me think here. SJ, SL, and SM compliant, which this mobile one fits the bill very nicely. So uh, the nice synthetic oil will give you a nice multi-weather oil. Okay, so on this we got a little pop-off lid. Comes right off, not a problem. A little oil fill cap unscrews, has a little oil filled gauge on it, and yep, no oil in there, although you can tell that they've tested it because they've got prep lube in there, 
I got a little accessory here, and th this should fit. This is a little metal dipstick assembly that has a little magnet in the end of it, so it'll pick up any metal shavings in the crankcase when the engine first starts up and starts breaking in. And I'm just going to give it a little test fit, make sure it fits in there good. Yep, fits in there perfectly. Excellent. Got the funnel. Pop it right in there. Now you don't want to overfill your oil and you obviously don't want to underfill it. Uh, in the manual here they're suggesting 16.9 fluid ounces and uh, needless to say that's not the easiest thing to guess on. So you just put a little bit in, check your dipstick, so forth and so on. Uh, as the oil comes up near the threads of the uh, oil fill, you'll be able to tell that that's when you're starting to get pretty close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up with oil off camera. And I also have my gasoline ready. Make sure you know what grade of gasoline your generator runs on before you buy gas. Uh, just for safety, I have my fire extinguisher handy. And uh, I'm going to go off camera, load up the oil, and get this prepped. All right, so here we go. Okay, so we're oiled up. Use the little funnel that came in with the generator. Work great. Um, you got to be really careful not to overfill. One of the things is make sure you're on level ground. My garage floor I discovered is not quite level, so I wound up with a little bit of, of spill. Um, your oil container may tell you how many fluid ounces with a little visual measuring kind of thing. That'll help you, but it's not super accurate. So be very careful, otherwise you're gonna wind up with an oil spill between an unlevel floor and trying to follow this too closely. Yeah, I wound up with a little bit of an oil spill. Not too bad, easy to clean up. Uh, next thing is, is putting in gas. I've already done that. I only put in a little bit just to get it going. If you see these Midwest gas containers that have got these super tricky childproof fast flow vented tubes. Yeah, don't use that. Reason being is the way this is designed is, you know, you take this cap off and that's great. And it, it has this little childproof lock. You pop that in like that. And then when you turn this upside down and pushes in like that, right? It vents. It's designed for fast, fast flow. Well, this only holds maybe a gallon of gas, and if you have a two gallon container, or even a one gallon container, it is gonna go in there so fast, it's just gonna go everywhere. Now, I was smart enough not to do that once I figured out how, you know, understood how this really worked. I was like, I'm not doing that. And I just took the cap off and used a funnel and was very careful and only put in maybe a pint worth of gasoline. That should be more than enough to get us going. Okay, so that's a big tip for you. Just get a regular everyday gas can that's got, you know, the little flex tube and the little vent on the back. Just get one of those. If you have a small generator, your life will be much easier putting gas in it. Otherwise, you're going to wind up wearing half the gas. All right, we're moving the gas can away over there. I put in my magnetic dipstick. I'm keeping the regular dipstick because it has indicator marks on it, you know, at least, you know, low and high. That's not much, but it's something. So I'm going to hang on to that. And before we fire this up, we're going to just quickly go over a couple of features. What do we got? Well, we have a choke mechanism, fuel on, fuel off, so forth and so on. 
we have connectors for DC. We have a DC outlet plug. That's nice. These are more for like uh, the regular clip-on type deal. Then we have the regular 120 AC outputs, a pair of those. And we have two USB ports, which is nice because you can charge up your phone and so forth. And this is designed to uh, maintain a nice clean signal for electronics. You also have a little nut on the front here you'll see and that's for a ground wire so you can run a, a wire stake it into the ground using a, a metal stake and that'll ground the unit which is not an unwise idea it's actually a very good idea to do that so you don't accidentally zap yourself and electrocute yourself so having a ground wire if possible is a wise idea all right, so we have gas, we have oil. We've gone over just a couple of the little quick items that are on the system. And uh, just give me a minute and we'll get ready to fire this up as soon as I pull off a few more tags and labels. Okay, so as you can see, we're pretty much ready. Uh, they give you this nice little card, which they use a little chain instead of a cable tie to attach to the go handle here and it gives you some quick instructions on how to start it and how to shut it off which is kind of nice as you know you can reattach it and that way you won't lose it so um, we're gassed up we're oiled up I've gone through some of the tips there about making sure you're on level ground and making sure your oil levels good and putting gas in it using a, a gas can that's not gonna spew gasoline everywhere so i think we're pretty much set so following the instructions on the gas cap for the unit it has an on and an off position to start we want to go into the on position that vents the gas can and gets it ready then our next step obviously is on the big handle which is oh, turn it around Oops, <laughs> it's on the face, not on the back. What am I thinking? We turn the big handle on to on, like so, right? We pull the choke out like so. Now, it doesn't say it on the directions, but make sure that your little eco mode is turned to off also. Okay. So that pretty much has us set up. Now all we have to do is pull the cord, fire it up hopefully, and then once it warms up a little bit, push the choke back in. Here we go. It'll take a minute for it to warm up just a little bit. Choking just a little bit to get the revs up. I had my fire extinguisher handy just in case. Not a bad idea. You're dealing with gasoline, so. Now when I first fired up, there was a little bit of oil smoke with the, with the choke on. Not to be worried about. As I eased the choke in, that pretty much went away. And it's running beautifully, as you can see. Not very loud. Uh, again, I'm gonna let that run for a couple of minutes before putting a load on it. So it gets nice and warmed up and uh, we'll see what happens all right Two, three 
minutes now, and you can hear what it's like. I'm going to switch it over to eco mode, which will kick down the throttle. There it goes. Nice, quiet idle. Nice and smooth. Now, once you start putting load on it, of course, it's going to rev up some. I don't have anything to put a big load on to it, but just a couple of tips when it comes to that. You'll see uh, extension cords like this one all the time in hardware stores, the orange ones. These are like 14 gauge, sometimes even less than that. If you're running something that pulls a lot of power and you have your generator pretty far away from what it is, don't use these you're going to wind up heating it up and it's not going to be good. You're going to get a big power drop. Get a big heavy duty 12 gauge monster cable. These things are huge. They're heavy duty. This one's 25 feet. If you're pulling, let's say, you know, plugging in a refrigerator and you're pulling four or 500 watts to fire up that refrigerator, you know, you want to do it over a big cable as opposed to something kind of skinny because after a while if you have a lot of devices going that's going to heat up and your power is actually going to drop off uh, due to resistance so you want a nice big heavy cable at least to start you out for your first 25 or 50 feet and then after that you can put in like a, you know a power strip and run some smaller cords or run devices directly what have you Anyways, I'm going to plug this in, just like that, and then we're going to plug in this light, and we're going to see what happens. Can't reach it. <laughs> there we go. You might have heard the generator kick just slightly when I turned on the bulb. That was the initial draw. It bumped that little RPM up just slightly. That bulb is probably two to three hundred watts. It's a studio light bulb, so it's really bright. It pulls a lot of power. But that gives you a general idea of uh, how to set up your generator and get yourself going. I hope these tips were useful. Uh, it's my first time using one of these. I did a lot of studying about them first, so I knew what I was doing and what I was getting into. Uh, a couple other little tips. Uh, again, a grounding wire is a good idea. You know, stake it into the dirt. That way it's grounded. You won't get yourself electrocuted that way. Not that you're likely to, but better safe than sorry. Don't run the generator indoors. It is gas powered. It does put out carbon monoxide as an exhaust. It will kill you if you run it indoors. So don't do that. Um, back here on the back of the unit, we have the exhaust port. It has a spark arrestor to help reduce the possibility of it throwing a spark and starting a fire. That's good. But that also gets extremely hot. Don't touch that. Stay away from it. Okay, so that's a few items there. I don't suggest picking it up and carrying it around when it's running, obviously, because uh, that makes the fuel slosh for one thing, but worse yet, it'll make the oil in the crankcase slosh around, and that's not good for an engine of this type. So. Don't carry it around when it's running, unless you're just moving it a foot or two, you know. But I really don't suggest moving it while it's running. Um, this also has a circuit breaker to reset, which is nice. Let's see, what else have we got? Oh yeah, overload indicator. If you're drawing way too much power, that little light will start flashing and tell you there's an overload. Avoid that. That's not good for the unit. It's not good for the devices you're powering. So try not to overload it. 
then uh, of course on this particular unit, this has a fuel shutoff mode, which if I switch it into this mode and close the vent, what it'll do is it will automatically keep running, but it will drain the carburetor so that the carburetor doesn't have fuel left in it, and that way when it's in storage, uh, you won't get fuel in the carburetor that's going to gunk it up with old age. And uh, that's a nice feature. That's why I bought this particular one, is to be able to do that. All right, so I think that's it for our video. Uh, I'm going to plug in a few more goodies while I'm just fooling around off camera and uh, let this run for a while to give it a little break-in period. So hopefully, next time PG&E shuts off my power, which they've been doing a lot in the last month of October, uh, I'll be ready for them. Till then, I'll see you on the next video.